Hello, it is Tiffany of Clarity Conference Courage Women's Empowerment, and I want to do this video to talk about relationships, how to know when it's time to leave a relationship. Now, I know a lot of people will tell you all the reasons why you should stay in a relationship or how to stay in a relationship or how to make, make your relationships work, but I specifically want to do this video to know how to know when it's time to leave. Here's the thing, I am divorced. I was married for six years. I was with my ex for 10 years, 10 years of my life with this one person. And it was very, very difficult to come to that conclusion in my mind and in my heart and in my soul where I made the decision to get a divorce. It was not easy, but I had to look at the big picture and I had to start asking myself, is it time to leave? So in this video, I'm gonna give you some strategies and some tips around how to figure out for yourself if it is time to leave a relationship. Now, make sure before we jump into this content that you like, share, and subscribe to the channel if, you knew, if you're new, because I want so many other people to get benefit from this information so it can also change their lives. So the first way that you know you will need to leave your relationship hands down abuse, whether that's physical abuse, psychological abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, whatever it may be, abuse should never be tolerated under any circumstances. And I know some of you who are going through a serious situation, you may say, well, Tiffany, I have children in the home. If that is the case, then I highly, highly encourage you, if you are being physically, mentally, or emotionally abused, that you seek help. There are so many domestic violence centers that you can go to to reach out, whether that's counseling or therapy, or to get some legal information so that you can figure out under legal circumstances how to safely extract yourself and your children from the household, especially if you feel like your life is in danger. So again, the number one reason to leave a relationship, hands down, is abuse. You do not deserve to be abused and you do not deserve to have someone hurt you or your children or family members. So if you are in that situation, then please, please, please reach out, get help, Google domestic violence centers in your area, wherever you are, and figure out some resources in your area of how you can get out. The second reason to possibly think about leaving a relationship, you cannot count on that person. Now, don't get me wrong, ladies. I know in relationships, it's not always gonna be 50-50. I know that sometimes one person will give a little bit more than the other. That's, that's how relationships go sometimes. But when you are always the one giving, and I don't just mean giving in one circumstance, you're giving emotionally, you're giving financially, you're giving uh, psychologically, you're giving physically. That was my situation. I was giving so much of myself that I literally had no energy or time for myself. Now, in different relationships, maybe there's one person that gives emotionally and another person may give financially. I get that. That is, that is kind of harmony and balance. I'm not talking about those type of relationships. I'm talking about where you are dealing with a person that is so needy. They can't take care of themselves. They can't look after themselves. You are constantly having to give them time and attention and finances and money. And they are literally a child. They are literally depending on you for everything. I'm sorry, but that is not a relationship that you need to stay in because here's the biggest, here's the biggest reason why. You will begin to resent that person and you will begin to do things to that person that makes you then become the perpetrator and they become the victim because you're so angry and you will end up mistreating them unintentionally but you start to become so resentful of their behavior. On the flip side, it might be the complete opposite. You still become the person who is being victimized. They are in control and they're controlling you. They're controlling your money. They're controlling what you do. They're controlling where you go. And again, this goes back to that psychological abuse. So either way, it is not a great situation if you're with someone that you can't count on because after a while, when you need something serious, who do you call? Who do you go to? Because you can't go to them. The next reason, you've been to counseling and it's not working. And I don't just mean counseling one time. I mean several times. Counseling, therapy, group support. Maybe you've been to Temple. Maybe you've been to a priest. 
Maybe you go to church ministries, whatever it may be, and you constantly go back and back and back to talk about the exact same issues and they're not going away. I'm telling you, I have been there and it is so frustrating to constantly go to therapy and counselors and talking about the same thing over and over and over again and it's not getting you anywhere. Nothing is changing. This is the point where you and that person need to ask yourself, do we really need to be together? Because here's the thing, in certain relationships, there are some deal breakers that people are just not willing to do. For example, if you want children and that person definitely doesn't, that's kind of a deal breaker. If that's something that you really, really desire and that's something that they really don't want, that's a deal breaker. If you're in a circumstance where the person that you're dealing with wants to have an open relationship and you don't, guess what? That might be a deal breaker. Unless one of the two of you change your mind, that might be something that may ruin the relationship. If you're in a situation where you have a family member, an in-law maybe, that is living with you and you have had enough and you want them to move out and your spouse or significant other is saying, absolutely not, we're taking care of them, it's my way or the highway, that might be a deal breaker. And I'm not saying that it is and I'm not saying that's something that you can't work through, but there are certain things that may be your deal breaker where you have had enough. And if that's the case, and if you have gone to therapy and you've gone to counseling and you talked about it a lot, then it may be time to call it quits. I'm just being honest. Next, you cannot forgive. It may be a situation where the person cheated on you or they violated you in some way and you can't move past it. Or on the flip side, that person can't forgive you. Maybe you cheated. Maybe you violated their trust. Maybe you did something that they just can't believe you did. And even though they said they were sorry or you said you were sorry, you've gone to counseling, you've gone to therapy, it is obvious that the forgiveness is not there. They are still angry or you are still angry. They're holding a grudge or you're holding a grudge. You cannot let it go. And don't get me wrong, forgiveness, especially when it comes to violating trust, is very, very difficult, especially when it comes to a marriage or a life partnership. However, if you make the decision to stay and work on it, then you have to be willing to get into that process of forgiving and not constantly bringing it back up and making the person pay over and over and over again. There comes a point where you have to get to the point where you ask yourself, can I truly forgive this person and move on and start fresh, not saying you forgot it, but you start fresh and you start to trust them again, or are you going to make them pay for it for the rest of their lives? And that's the flip side too, are they making you pay for it? So the question then becomes, can I get over this? And if you can't get over it, then it might be time to leave. The next one, they feed into your personal toxic behavior. So what do I mean by this? Well, here's the thing, if you're a drug addict, and let's say you're living with someone who is not on drugs, they don't even do drugs, but yet they give you money so you can buy drugs. Or if you're an alcoholic and they enable your alcoholism by giving excuses to your job and giving excuses to family members of why you couldn't show up, but you really just have a hangover, guess what? That person is playing into that toxic behavior. They are enabling you to be worse than you should be. They're not helping you get better, they're just allowing you to spiral down that hole that you're already in. This is not the type of behavior that you need to be in. Or on the flip side, maybe you both have different addictions, drug addiction, sex addiction, alcoholism, and you feed into each other's toxic behaviors. You allow each other to get worse and worse and worse. And really when you reflect, this person isn't making you better, they're just making you worse. This is a situation where you may need to either take a break indefinitely or at least get therapy and counseling for the both of you. Now, this is something that possibly you can work through, but if you've gone to therapy, if you've gone to counseling, and again, it is not working and your behavior, your toxicity is just making you more unhealthy, more depressed, more anxious, sicker, or more addicted, then it may be time to step away from this person because this person is feeding into your toxic behavior and it's not helping you move forward. The next reason, jealousy. You're with a person who you feel like is constantly trying to compete with you. 
They're jealous of your accomplishments at work. They're jealous of your accomplishments in your life. They're jealous of the type of relationship you have with your family. Trust me when I tell you, this is not the type of relationship that's going to be long-term and healthy. This is the type of relationship that after a while will build up tension, will build up resentment, and honestly, it's probably gonna result in a lot of arguments and a lot of back and forth and a lot of gaslighting. The person telling you, well, the reason they're not achieving is because of you. They're, they're blaming you, it's your fault. So here's the thing. When you're dealing with a person that is constantly jealous of you and trying to compete with you and you're in a romantic relationship, it is not going to go well. This is a recipe for disaster. And you need to ask yourself, do I wanna continue with this person? Is this something that we can work through in therapy or is it just time to go? Someone who blames you for all their problems. Trust me when I tell you this, this is not the type of relationship you wanna be in. Because in all honesty, the only person that we can blame for our problems is ourselves. When you take massive accountability and responsibility for your life, you realize that you have the power to change your life. So if you're dealing with a person <clears throat> who is always blaming you, who is always saying it's your fault that they got fired, or it's your fault that they're not moving forward in life, or you're the reason why they can't live out their adventure or whatever it may be, you need to ask yourself, do you want to spend the rest of your life with someone who constantly blames you for their shortcomings or what they perceive to be their shortcomings in life? Is that really the type of relationship you wanna be in? Lastly, there is no passion and no spark. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not necessarily for every relationship. There are some people who have been together for a long, long time and they have become very deep friends. And yes, they have lost their passion, they've lost their spark, they may not even have any sexual interaction with each other anymore. However, they have companionship, and for them that's enough. But for a good majority of relationships, passion and spark is the thing. It's the thing that brings enjoyment to the relationship. And passion and spark is something that you have to work on. It's not something that's constant all the time. So you really have to put in effort. But if you're with someone and you're like, I wanna continue that passion, I wanna continue that spark, I wanna do what it takes for us to desire each other, and they don't wanna do that, they're like, eh, I'm good. And that's something you might wanna think about. Do you wanna be with someone who is not as passionate about you as you are about them? They don't have the spark for you that you have for them or vice versa, neither one of you have passion, neither one of you have spark. And as a matter of fact, not only do you not have sparks for each other, you're starting to look outside the relationship to get that spark. Maybe that emotional affair that you're having with your coworker, or that online affair that your partner was having with someone that he met online or whoever it may be. The bottom line is you have to start asking yourself when you've lost the passion, when you've lost the spark, is this something that you wanna continue for the rest of your life? If what you have, is it good enough to keep you together forever and totally committed to one another? And if it is not, then it may be time for you both to have that conversation of whether or not you wanna keep going. So those are some of the reasons that you can see whether or not you should stay in a relationship. And I know some people are like, no, Tiffany, don't you wanna say, talk about how to make a relationship grow? Here's the thing. <laughs> I am Molly Sunshine all day long, but I'm also a realist. And I feel like when it comes to giving your time and your effort and your energy to some other person, a human being, then it should be worthwhile. It should be something you can look back and say, that was the best experience I've ever had. And if it's not, even though you have to put in work, if it's not at all the best experience or at least close to a great experience, then you're just wasting time that you could be spending with someone that you are more compatible with, someone that you do have passion for, someone where when you two come together as whole, amazing, fulfilled people, you create and grow and develop new and exciting innovations together. To me, that is a relationship that you should want to be in, that we all really desire to be in because it expands us and it really expands the world. Now, if you're in a situation where you're like, Tiffany, I think that I'm in a relationship where I need to work on myself to make myself a better person and it's not just my spouse or it's not just my partner, 
then definitely click the link below, get on my calendar for a free coaching strategy session. We'll talk about where you are, your relationships, not just in your romantic relationships, but your family relationships, your coworker relationships, and see if maybe the issue might be you. And maybe you need to start making some changes to yourself in order to have better vibrant relationships. Again, click the link below in the description, get on my calendar, we'll talk, we'll see where things go, and maybe we'll work together. As always, make sure you share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.